Uh, I'm going to go very, very quickly through these because I think the most important thing is for us to talk about both what we have heard and what we need to talk about if we're to get any meaningful reform this year. This is simply to remind those of you who may be skeptics, not that there would be anybody in Massachusetts who wouldn't think that, that the AMA actually stood for a whole lot of things other than physician payment. And it's really, it's really important to reinforce that because from the time of the founding of the AMA in 1847, we have been concerned about the betterment of the public health and medical education and ethics and quality, and this is just simply to set that stage. We absolutely subscribe as an organization to the IOM goals. You know what they are here, um, patient-centered care. This is what's driving it, and you've heard it already today. We are now spending $2.4 trillion. It is anticipated to go in the direction that you're looking at, and that is what is driving all of this. This is a busy slide. Uh, this comes from the Commonwealth Fund. Uh, I don't need to tell all of you this. Uh, the, what you need to know is that if you, among these developed countries, if you rank six, you're at the bottom. If you rank one, you're at the top. And if you look where the United States stands on a variety of measures of, of delivery and quality of health care, you will see that we can do better in this country. And it is time for us to acknowledge that and make positive efforts to do better. This is a slide that's a very stunning slide. And it shows, although it came out in 2007 or 8, it, uh, it related to the 2001 year. And look at this slide. The top 5% Look at the top, 5% of Medicare beneficiaries account for 43% of the spend. If you add another 5%, you're now up to over 63% of the Medicare spend. So what do we need to do about that? Not kill granny, not at all. We need to look at where those costs are coming from. This is also not a surprise to you, so I'm going to go quickly through it. It is chronic disease, and it totals a great deal. Now, Pregnancy is not a chronic disease, although I had five children, and there are those who thought it was a chronic disease. Well, I like this one. Uh, the doctors are saying, why are our health care costs higher than other countries? And the USA guy with his super gulp in his hand, you know, there are reasons, and we are all responsible. It is not just uh, greedy people. It is not middlemen. It is not uh, evil insurers. It is not... It is, a lot of it is some of the choices that we make. And this is one way to address it. Maybe the prescription for reducing costs is the lock on the fridge. Now, I ask you, do, does anybody believe that at this point in time, when this summer we heard about killing granny, are we going to be able to have this difficult but necessary conversation in this country? We really must have that conversation and do it in a meaningful way that we help people make lifestyle choices that are, are better for them. You've already heard about bending the curve. You heard it from Mark McClellan. Um, and, and this is just the slide that was predicted. The bending the curve of the rate of rise is what was the, um, the reason that the president called together some very unlikely bedfellows. And it was painted in the, the context of Healthcare costs are crippling our country. It is making many of our businesses globally non-competitive. And medical costs are the number one cause of personal bankruptcy right now. So medical costs are a very serious problem. And what are you in your sector going to do about it? And that was the question. It was not, I want to tell you right now, that that was not put to the AMA as, we will fix SGR if you will take anything else we do to you. There was no deal. We were tragically disappointed and saddened and angered and a whole lot of other things that we're tempering in public by the vote yesterday. We were very saddened by that. But we are committed to health system reform and to bending this cough cost curve. And here were the folks who were in that room about a year ago 
very unlikely bedfellows, including um, the insurance industry, including the hospital association. Doctors and hospitals have a love-hate relationship. I may, need, may not need to tell you that. Uh, pharma, Advamed. I mean, it was really, it was a very interesting group of people, and the question that was addressed to each of them was, we are in a serious situation in our country. What can you do in your sector with things that you can control to help reduce the rate of rise of costs. Here's the first picture of Jim. Uh, Jim is at the far end, for those of you who don't know him. Rebecca Patchen uh, at the other end is the chair of our board. Joe, uh, your own Joe Heyman uh, is the immediate past chair. And uh, they were there with the president and uh, Secretary Sebelius and a whole lot of other people uh, discussing this issue. The president came to the AMA meeting and said this to our House of Delegates, you did not enter this profession to be bean counters and paper pushers. You entered this profession to be healers, and that's what our health care system should let you be. He got probably uh, the either the biggest round of applause and standing ovation for this one or for another comment that I'm going to show you in a minute. And this is again Jim. This is because Jim's the A-team and he's not able to be here today. His response in July was that we are committed to health reform. The status quo is not acceptable and very important. It is the patient and the doctor that need to make the decision on what is best based on the patient's individual needs and based on science and evidence. We are not newcomers to the issue of the uninsured. We have been at this for a long time. We've addressed it in a variety of organizations that we have partnered with and tried to come to common ground with over the years. We know, and you know, because you have taken principled action in your state, that these are the consequences of being uninsured. I don't need to reiterate that to you. You also know that patients who are patients all over the country, including those who are insured, uh, are worried about the cost of medical care. We started uh, two years before the uh, presidential election our Voice for the Uninsured campaign. It was a, a decided effort to elevate the understanding of people in the country that their doctors are worried about those who are uninsured, that we care about those who are uninsured. And we began a multimedia campaign, first targeted in the presidential primary um, states, and then later rolled out across the country. I just want to show you our plan to uh, ensure the uninsured. This is not what's on the table in Washington, however. We have had this plan for some time. It's not new. We believe that patients should own their own health insurance, and when they leave one job, it should go with them. We believe that there should be tax credits that are, in, that are inversely uh, related to a person's income, and we know that there should be um, insurance market uh, reforms. The employer-based insurance system is an accident of history. It started at the time of World War II. You probably all know about that when wages were frozen. And employers, in order to keep and attract good employees, couldn't raise their wages, but they could give them benefits, and health insurance was very cheap at the time. That is exactly how it all started. It then got reinforced when the IRS made a critical decision to exclude from taxable income health insurance benefits provided by the employer. And remember that anybody not getting health insurance through their employer, buying it on their own, they're taxed on that. So there's an enormous inequity in the tax treatment of those who obtain their health insurance through their employer and those like my son-in-law who owns a window washing business who has to buy it on his own. But what our plan is is not the issue today. It's what is the legislation. You heard it. It's, it's not about, about vague concepts. It's about what's, what's on the table in Washington. This is another important issue since we are, uh, for the time being, at least for the foreseeable future, going to continue the employer-sponsored health insurance. It's important for you to know how much that has deteriorated. You're down to about 60% of employers who even offer their employees health insurance. 